Way back in April of 2018, I flew from San Diego to Frankfurt in Lufthansa A340-300 economy class. It was kind of neat, but short-lived thanks to the COVID-19 pandemic. Then, in March of 2022, Lufthansa returned to San Diego with non-stop service to Munich this time, and I couldn't wait to try it <laughs> in business class. Long story short, it's been a year of patiently waiting for a good deal to pop up, and, well, it seems as if good deals simply do not exist on this route. Premium economy was the best I could do. Good afternoon from the San Diego International Airport. My name is Scott. Writing airline reviews is what I do for a living, and I've got a doozy for you today. This is going to be an in-depth review of Lufthansa A350-900 Premium Economy from San Diego to Munich, and hold on, before you get excited, no, this is not a review of the all-new Premium Economy product. That's going to come later this year, but for now, let's just appreciate the fact that Lufthansa is giving San Diego any attention at all. Kicking things off today is the realization that premium economy passengers don't get any special treatment during the check-in process. I see queues for economy, business class, and first class, so what exactly am I supposed to do here? Gate number 48 is where this flight will be departing from today. Eventually. There are still a couple hours to go, which would have been perfect if I had the credentials to get into a lounge. Which I don't. However, the far west end of Terminal 2 is pretty dead in the mid-afternoons, so maybe not having lounge access isn't the end of the world. Pro tip, if you're flying out of San Diego in Lufthansa economy, regular or premium, and you want a quiet place to relax and pretend like you're sitting in a lounge, the far west end of Terminal 2 is your spot. Unfortunately, I was so busy stretching out and relaxing that I completely missed getting footage of the aircraft arriving from Munich. I'm getting sloppy in my old age. Anyway, she's here, and she looks great. I didn't even know that there were Lufthansa A350s flying around in the old livery anymore. Then again, Maybe it's one of those new retro liveries that looks old simply because not enough time has passed since the new one was unveiled? I don't know. Either way, I'm just really glad to see Lufthansa back in San Diego. Do I even need to tell you that this flight was running exactly on schedule? If there's one thing that I love most about German public transport, it's punctuality. Of course we're getting out of here on time today. Somehow I ended up in boarding group 2, along with business class passengers, and I'm not sure if it was because of my United Airlines gold status, or because it was one of the perks of premium economy. I honestly have no idea. There's no mention of priority boarding for premium economy passengers anywhere on the Lufthansa website or app, so I'd like to think that, just maybe, Lower to mid-level status on United might have some value after all. Well, this is it. Lufthansa recently unveiled an all-new long-haul premium economy seat, which will begin rolling out later this year. But for now, this is as good as it gets. It's nice to see that blankets and pillows are provided, and I do have to say that this is not a bad-looking seat. It's basically a really nice domestic U.S. first-class seat, and I kid you not, they refer to this armrest as a cocktail table. <laughs> we'll see about that. Legroom is just bonkers, at least by economy class standards, and yes, there are footrests. One thing there isn't, however, is a bulkhead wall separating premium economy from regular economy. I didn't even see USB power outlets at first, but these full-size electrical outlets between the seats will do in a pinch, I suppose. Speaking of amenities, not only do they provide full bottles of water, there are travel kits as well. At least that's what they're called on the website. 
Whatever they want to call it is fine with me because I'm going to use all this stuff eventually. 11-inch video screens are another perk of premium economy, which, if I'm being honest, didn't really look all that much bigger than what I saw back in regular economy. But let's get real here. The most important part of premium economy is the seats themselves. Lufthansa claims that these seats have 50% more room on all sides compared to regular economy, which technically did make getting footage of the pre-departure orange juice 50% easier. Sorry, but being in the middle seat is going to limit the amount of departure footage that I can show you. So, I'm going to use this opportunity to let you know that I actually posted a full review of this flight over on sandspotter.com, which contains a lot more information than what I'm showing here in this video. It's definitely worth a read, as long as you can stomach the campy dad jokes. And now, it's time to sit back, relax, and enjoy the 10 hour and 30 minute flight to Munich. The first order of business is to get my giant napkin in place. I guarantee that I'm going to be glad that it's here when I drop food in my lap. Anyway. Before the food comes, let's have a quick look at the video entertainment system. I think maybe the best way to sum this up is to say that it's a visually outdated UI with a darn good catalog of content. Which, oddly enough, is a great way to describe the hot towel as well. It was lukewarm and thin, but it did the job. Oh, and these cheap earbuds were a little surprising. Most other airlines provide noise-canceling headphones in long-haul premium economy, so I'm not sure exactly what happened here. In the end, it didn't really matter though, because my audio port in my seat was filled with gunk and I wasn't able to use them anyway. Alright, I assume this is food, so let's eat. I also assume that this is exactly what everyone back in regular economy is getting, which is fine, because the meal should be more substantial. Assuming they don't drop an entire tray of food on my head, that is. Anyway, the problem with assumptions is that they let your mind go to places it has no business going. I mean, this was a perfectly fine meal. It tasted great, it was enough to satisfy my hunger, and it actually didn't look all that bad. I was just foolishly thinking that they would surprise me with something a lot better than what they were serving back in regular economy, so yeah. My assumptions let me down. I know this is an unpopular opinion among the frequent flyer crowd, but I'm going to say it anyway. Premium economy just might be a better deal than business class. For most people anyway. I mean, you're not exactly going to feel cramped thanks to the generous leg room. Seat recline is decent, and the video entertainment is just as good. Taking a walk to the back and checking out the super dense regular economy configuration really drives that point home. Speaking of walking to the back, that's exactly what you're going to have to do to use the lavatory. Nope, premium economy passengers don't get their own dedicated loot. Four and a half hours later, and this is Lou Review Part 2, <laughs> I guess. Which, thinking back on it, says a lot about how comfortable the premium economy seats are for sleeping. It's rare for me to be able to sit in any economy seat, premium or not, for more than a couple hours at a time without having to get up and stretch my back. The fact that I went four hours without getting up is nothing short of a miracle. Not gonna lie, I definitely could have used a few hours more of sleep before digging into breakfast. According to the menu, this is going to be scrambled eggs with beans and salsa. I know it's kind of hard to see, but they weren't kidding. It looks okay. Maybe not as premium as I was expecting, but it certainly tasted and smelled fine. But more than anything, I'd love to know how they decided on a Mexican breakfast for a German airline. Maybe one of my biggest takeaways from this Lufthansa A350 premium economy experience is the realization that premium economy is far more underrated than I thought. And remember, that's saying a lot considering that this is the older style seat which is going to be replaced soon. Heck, 
I didn't even find the service on this flight to be anywhere near as good as what I've experienced in long-haul premium economy on any other airline. But that doesn't matter. I'm actually still really comfortable and fully capable of going another few hours if need be. This makes me really excited about the future of premium economy because it's impossible for it not to get better from here. And on that overly optimistic note, welcome to Munich. We're actually 11 minutes early, which was disappointing only because I was hoping for an exact to the minute arrival time so that I could have made a clever comment about the punctuality of German public transportation. Maybe next time. Oh, and it's worth noting that this flight was nearly 100% full today, which is really good news for San Diego avgeeks. There's definitely demand for non-stop service to Europe from San Diego, and I can only hope that this means that other airlines will want to get in on this action as well. The main benefit of that will be lower prices due to increased competition, which is something that desperately needs to happen. Have you priced flights out of San Diego to Europe on Lufthansa or British Airways recently? It's scary, <laughs> in all classes of service, and more often than not, far cheaper to make a connection on the East Coast somewhere. But that's no fun. KLM, Air France, if you're listening, we can't wait to see you in San Diego.